The time has come to make some birria tacos. I'm officially classifying birria tacos as the Mexican French dip. And if you've got some time to spare and some money to buy the ingredients, these tacos are gonna make for such a memorable and joyful evening with the family, trust me. I'm not here to waste your time, I'm here to help you cook and hopefully get a few laughs along the way, so let's go! Just got a little bit of coriander and cumin right here. I'm gonna add some salt and some Sergeant Gilbert action. Get out of there. Sergeant Gilbert, out, get out of there. Straight in, you can do this kind of course because we are gonna grind this all up and get to grinding. If you don't have a mortar and pestle or a coffee grinder, just use pre-ground spices. It's gonna be fine, dude. Now I'm just gonna take a cutting board and sprinkle down about half my mixture and I'm gonna lay in these boneless short ribs. They come from the land of Costco, the region of meat department. So I just had these, I'm using them up, but if you can find short ribs on the bone, that's gonna be even better for your broth. But the fat content in these are insane, so I know this is gonna work out very well. Rest of your mixture, just sprinkle on top and then just really Take the time and just dip up all that extra seasoning from the board, boom. Now, nice medium high heat pan. Drop in some nice high smoke point oil. I'm just using avocado. Now wait for this to start to smoke. Okay, now carefully lay in your beef. Just a light sear here, so just about two, three minutes, and then flip and do another three minutes. Now keep the pan on, but remove the beef. And we're gonna add some crushed garlic and shallot. Straight in, the heat's just a touch over medium. And we're gonna cook these down until they're nice and dark. So over here I have some simmering beef broth. So garlic and shallots have been cooking for about eight minutes. We're gonna add some of that beef broth, about two and a half cups. Now we're gonna add some de-seeded arbol chilies and chili de cuajillo. Now this is not traditional, but I'm gonna put some chipotle because I love it and I think it's gonna be great. Now we'll simmer this up for about 10 minutes. Okay, now we are gonna transfer to this blender. Holy Lord, this is, ah! Probably a better way to do that, my friends. Oh, oh God. Wasn't too bad, I guess. Could have been worse, could have been worse, could have been worse. And we'll just puree for about a minute. Dunzo. Now over here I have a strainer over my beef broth. We're just gonna pour that mixture through. And just work that through with a spoon to get out any hard bits of that chili. Once that's all worked through, looking good, let's just add our beef back in. I'm also gonna add a stick of cinnamon, which we'll fish out later, and some fresh oregano, same deal. And we're gonna leave this to simmer for about two and a half, three hours, or until that meat just begins to fall apart. And I'll tell you right now, the smell in this entire house is incredible. I love the combination of spice and cinnamon. Something about that is so warm and so comforting. And while we're here, my friends, if you enjoy cooking, if you love food and you really wanna learn, this channel is gonna be a great place to do that. So please remember to subscribe and also like this post if you're getting some value. That tells the YouTube algorithm that this is good stuff and pushes my video out to more people. Okay, it's been cooking for about two hours now. We're just gonna fish out that cinnamon and those oregano stems. And we're just gonna add in some half and peeled carrots. Gonna add some more flavor to the sauce. Crack the lid back on and continue to simmer. Three hours total and kill the heat. And you can see now we have all that beautiful fat on top. Now to keep this meat as tender as possible, just leave it in the pot with the heat off. Ah! Ooh, fridge caught me back, man, ow. I've watched a few birria taco videos online and everyone pulls the meat out immediately. Big mistake! Letting it relax in the liquid it was cooked in is the best thing you can do for it. It's gonna be so much more juicy, so much more tender, and it's such a simple thing, so just do it. Let's talk about tortillas for a second. Now, just like a cheeseburger is only gonna be as good as the bun and the meat, the same goes for a taco. I'm lucky enough to have a local tortilleria down the street. All they do is make corn tortillas and flour tortillas, and they're incredible. You know, when you buy the tortillas and they're still hot and you hold them against your cheek and, and you cry? No? Hmm. Anyway, just find the best corn tortilla you can and the tacos are gonna be so much better. Once your beef has rested in the liquid, just put it in a bowl and pour about almost a cup of the fat and liquid over. And with your hands, just mix until you get a consistency you like. Not too fine, not too chunky. This looks amazing. Taste it for salt. Just as I suspected, it's perfect. <laughs> Here's where it gets interesting. Just take two tortillas and be careful here because we want to dip up the fat and not the liquid. Quickly in and now it is covered in the fat. Boom, boom. It looks so good. Jiggle for me. Okay, I got a medium heat cast iron. Drop two tortillas. Now sue me, but I'm doing Fontina cheese. It's Italian cheese. It's one of the best melting cheeses on the planet, and I know it's gonna be amazing. Little cheese and some of that juicy meat just off on one side like this. After about a minute, fold them over and continue to cook. About 90 seconds and turn. Just a nice crunch on those. Now plate up with some of your reserved beef broth. Just a little cilantro in that broth. Now you know the drill. Dip it in the sauce. Woo! No joke, I am more excited about this than when my first child was born. I'm just kidding, I don't have any kids, but it's probably true. Oh my God. 
Holy sh! I want to swear. Mm. Oh my God, the Fontina was a good choice. Mm. Yeah! Insanely delicious. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out. Woo!